celebratory and special occasion for us. Thank you for joining. Thank you for coming to support Jake and Ingria. It is really good that you are here. Uh, I think that red flashing light might mean I'm live as well on Zoom and uh, Facebook. Is that right? Do I get my heads up? We're all good. Excellent. So if you're joining us on Zoom or Facebook, it's really good that you could join us for this special occasion as well. We wish you we could have uh, fitted you all in, uh, but unfortunately we're limited to numbers, but we're really glad that you can join us on Zoom and Facebook on this special occasion because we are doing a baptism tonight. And it may seem strange in the middle of a pandemic that we want to do a baptism, but we will come to that later. But this is part of what it means for us to be the people of God. And I just want to read from Luke's Gospel. We are looking at Luke on a Sunday morning. I just want to read when Jesus was baptized. We read this in Luke chapter 3. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. And really, that's the way Jesus identified with us. Although he was God, he came as a human. And he came in, as humanity, and he identified with us by going through baptism. He identified with us so that we could identify with him. And so as Ingria and Jake are coming to be baptized today, so too heaven, we believe, will be opened for them. And we believe that by faith they will be able to believe the words that God speaks over their lives. You are my son, Jake. You are my daughter, Ingria whom I love, and with you I am well pleased. And that for us is what baptism is. As Jesus identified with us, so we in baptism identify with him, knowing that just as God the Father loves Jesus and is pleased with him, so in exactly the same way, as we are baptized, your heavenly Father says to Jake, I love you, and I'm pleased with you, and you're part of this great family. And Ingria, I love you, and I'm pleased with you, and you're part of this great family of God. So that's what we're doing, and that's what we're celebrating. And by the Holy Spirit, we too believe that as they were baptized, they will know that witness in their spirit. And those of us who have been baptized ourselves, hopefully as we are reminded of our baptism, we too can hear afresh by the Spirit that God says to us, I love you. With you, I am well pleased. And we need that affirmation. And by the Spirit, that can be ours. But maybe you're watching or you're gathered and you don't have faith. You don't know that God loves you and is pleased with you and is for you. Well, as you witness this baptism, know that it is possible. And hopefully as we go through this service, you will find the way so that you too can experience that you have a God who is your Father, who can love you and who can be pleased with you. And that's why Jesus came. And that's why he came to be the way maker, the miracle worker, to enable us to experience all that God has for us. So we're going to sing together. Ingria chose this song as being significant to her in her spiritual journey as she uh, met Jesus afresh and heard the word spoken over her life, how Jesus has made a way for her. And so for all of us who trust in him, he can be that way maker, miracle worker. And today we want to lift up that name of Jesus who identified with us so we can identify with him. So today he can be your way maker, miracle worker. If you're on Zoom or on Facebook Live at home, do sing out as loud as you can 
Unfortunately, if you're in church, I ask you to mime under your masks, and I encourage you to use your bodies, as traditionally would have been done in worship. They wouldn't have known the words, but they would have lifted their hands in worship. They would have opened themselves up before God to offer the words that are sung over them, to claim them for their own and to offer them up to God. And that's why we lift up our hands. And that's why we use our bodies in worship. So if you are present at home or in church, do stand as we sing together, Waymaker. here on Facebook Live because we believe, Jesus, you are the way maker. We believe you are the miracle worker. We believe you are the promise keeper. 
And we believe you identified with us in our humanity and our brokenness, that you may raise us up to be children of God. And Lord Jesus, as we worship, as we gather, we believe resurrected Jesus, Ruler over all principalities, powers, and authorities. King of kings and Lord of lords. That you are here, moving in our midst. And all we ask is as we gather, as Jake and Ingria profess their faith through the waters of baptism, we ask that you will meet us. Meet us in our homes. Meet us in this church building. That we may know Jesus is alive and working today and working this evening. And touch lives of those who are watching. Touch them with healing power. Touch them with peace. That they may know that you're alive, Jesus. And people who gathered in this church building, touch them with salvation, touch them with life, touch them with love and health, that they may know, Jesus, that you truly are alive. We worship you, and we trust in you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. It's great to baptize Jake and Ingria as they profess their faith in Jesus, as they profess that they can hear those words, that they are children of God, they're loved by God, and God is pleased with them, and he is with them in the newness of life. But you want to hear their story as well. So they're going to come and just share a little bit of why they've come to be baptized. I'm going to ask Jake to come and uh, join me first at the microphone. And I'm simply going to ask him some questions to help, help you understand. But what you need to understand to begin with is how hard it is for anyone to stand up and share their faith. And so therefore, as we hear Jake, let us rejoice in what God has done for him. So, Jake, how long have you been coming to this church? Um, I've been coming here as long as I can remember. Uh, my mum and dad brought me to this church ever since, uh, well, took me to church ever since I was born and brought me here ever since I was a toddler. Brilliant. So what groups have you been part of in this church and what have you done as part of this church? Um, when I was younger, I uh, went to Rock and Chatterbox and uh, Youth Life Group. Uh, I went to Christian Union at school and I've helped at Toddlers and Rock. Uh, and uh, <laughs> well rescued. Well rescued. <laughs> Uh, be on the safe side. Yeah. And I'm now helping at the sound desk. <laughs> yeah. Very happy. And, and so what have you enjoyed about being part of One for Baptist Church? Um, I just really, uh, really enjoyed exploring uh, my faith and just being part of a community that just really cares for one another. So what have you come to believe about Jesus and faith? And so why are you choosing to be baptised? Um, I've come to believe that Jesus loves me, that I've sinned and got things wrong, uh, but he died to forgive me, will always be with me. Uh, at, uh, at times when I was unhappy, Jesus really helped me. I need, uh, I need to decide to follow him, so I want to show that by being baptised. Brilliant. That's very well put. Thank you, Jake. You can have a seat for a moment. I think Ingrid and Doug are going to come and uh, share Ingrid's story of what has brought her to this point. 
Now, Moses was a very good speaker, but sometimes he deputed the job to Aaron, so I'm Aaron. <laughs> I've been gravitating towards this day for some time. I come from a family of uh, believers. My grandmother was a reverend abroad. My mother, a Baptist. My father, an Anglican. I was brought up in a church-centered home, learning the importance Nine. of... Knowing the importance, importance of trust, of trust. In God. The trouble is I've um, put my contact lenses oh, into that. Oh, I did, I did, I was brought up... Moses will speak. ...in a church-centered home, knowing the importance of trusting God early on and repentance from sin. So, myself and my sisters and my mum, we went really to Apple... You can take your mask off and people might oh, hear right. you better. Well, as you okay. So, myself, my sisters and my mum, we went to Upper Holloway Baptist Church for many years, um, where we were lucky to have the Reverend Keith Sobey, who was charismatic and very inclusive. All newcomers were warmly welcomed and the church grew very well under his leadership. And in later years, as the leadership and direction changed in the Baptist Church, we went to the Methodist Church in Archway, where I continued to go until I arrived here in Wallingford. Um, most of you know my story by now, I think, so I'm just going to be very brief. Um, the Lord, through his servant, the prophet David Kwame Osei Apoku, who is the prophet in a church in South London, he confirmed in the summer of 2018 that myself and Dougal would be together. He prophesied that I would spend the rest of my life in Oxford with Dougal, Dougal and he endorsed and blessed our marriage. Prophet also told me that the Lord wanted a relationship with me and for me to help advance his kingdom. He then asked me to read John, the New Testament, which I did, and he also added later that I've been given the gift of kindness and been called to support Dougal's healing ministry, which would be revived and um, called to support and witness to people in the workplace um, where necessary, when they were, let's say, feeling discouraged or defeated, all of which I do and will continue to do. Um, it's an ongoing process. And then now, a year later, in 2019, Gail unbeknown to her, told me that the Lord spoke to her, telling her that I was to witness to people in the workplace and assist them where I can. So this prophecy confirmed to me that I've been called to do this, and it corroborated what the prophet had said to me over a year ago in 2018. So in general, I feel the timing of this baptism is apt, helping me strengthen my commitment to God and giving me greater spiritual strength, so to speak, to assist Dougal with his healing ministry and also greater strength to help advance God's kingdom. Thank you for listening, everybody. God bless you. And as we hear these two stories, everyone's story is different. But in each of those stories when a person discovers that Jesus is alive and that he can touch their lives today, when you come to the realisation that Jesus is alive and heals and saves and works today, what's our response? And the first sermon ever preached, Peter said that Jesus is alive. And when you come to believe that, the people said, what shall we do? And Peter replied simply with these words. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off for all whom the Lord our God will call. And that's simply the response. When we've come to believe that Jesus is alive, when we come to believe that he cares for us and is calling us and working in our lives, as Jake has uh, through his understanding of the faith, as Ingria has, as God has spoken and touched her life, the response simply is to repent, to turn your life around and say you're going to follow this Jesus and then be baptized. And when you do that, 
then God's Spirit comes afresh, and you can know that you're loved by God, and He's pleased with you. So there's nothing special about the water we're about to use. And in fact, even uh, because of COVID-19, we're going to have to baptize slightly differently. And so it doesn't really matter quite how you do it. But the important thing is not the water, not how we do it, but the, ob- the faith and the obedience. The faith that we believe that Jesus is alive and is calling us. And the obedience to do what he asks. And that's what we're going to do. And in a moment, we're going to baptize Jake, and I'm going to baptize Jake, and because we're not of the same household, I'm going to have to baptize him slightly differently to how I normally would. And so he's going to kneel and go forward in baptism. But then uh, Ingria is going to be baptized, and Doug is going to baptize Ingria. Uh, and uh, because they're of the same household, uh, Doug can do it as he wants to do it. So. Uh, There there we are. So that's what we're going to do. But the important thing I want you to hear is not necessarily the act, but the faith in Jesus and the obedience to repent and be baptized. And as they do that, the Holy Spirit will come afresh upon them and fill them. And so we're going to sing again another song Ingrid has chosen called It Is Well With My Soul. And that's the confidence we have as we put our faith in Jesus that is well with our soul, and therefore we come to be baptized to declare that together. So we're going to sing, and then we're going to do the baptism. In it, uh, when sorrows like sea billows roll, um, but the the whole uh, hymn is about the incredible power of God to give us peace in our souls no matter the circumstances. And um, because of the wonderful way that he works in our lives, uh, that he is a way maker and a miracle worker, um, that even in the midst of uh, trouble and tumult, uh, we can still find uh, rest in our souls. It is well with my soul. So 
Amen. Jake, you want to come and stand here? Now, I know I told you there was nothing special about this water. It is so lovely and hot, you may want to just use it afterwards as well <laughs> for a bath. Uh, I'll let David fill the baptistry again. This is uh, lovely and warm. But we come simply to use this water so that Jay can be baptised in the name of Jesus. Again, we have to do things slightly differently. So I want to share a scripture with you, Jake, before um, I baptise you. And then I'm going to pray for you that as you are baptised, God will fill you with the Holy Spirit. And I just want to share this verse that I want to leave with you to remember. It is found from Hebrews 12. And, there, and it says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. And we come today to baptise you, and you are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, many of them your own family. And you're privileged to have grandparents here and parents who share the faith. And you're surrounded by them and many others. And let them use you to encourage you to run this race. But remember, it's a race marked out for you, different to the rest of us. He's got a race marked out for you. He's got a plan for you. And you need to run it but just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, I pray for Jake. I thank you for his faith that he is now going to demonstrate through baptism. And Lord, I ask that as he is baptised, that as he goes down into the water and as he comes up from the water, in a very profound way, your Holy Spirit will fall afresh upon him. And in his spirit, he will hear the words that he is loved by God and that God, his heavenly Father, is pleased with him. And may he go and live the rest of his life, the life you have marked out for him and determined for him, and may he live it in the power of the Holy Spirit that comes upon him now as he is baptised. Because we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so before I call you to be baptised, I just want you to declare that faith in Jesus. To declare what you believe and have come to believe about Jesus that we baptise you in that faith. So, Jake, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do. Jake, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Saviour? I have. And finally, Jake, do you turn from evil, renounce sin, and intend to follow Christ? I do. Therefore, at your acknowledgement of your faith and at your request, I call you to be baptised. So Jake, simply just going to kneel. Therefore, Jake, in the name of Jesus, I now baptise you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him 
who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Know that Jesus has called you. And know that even in your weakness, the Spirit will be glorified in you. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Ingria. We thank you for her faith in Jesus. We thank you for the story of the way Jesus has opened up a new life for her. And we say thank you. We thank you for the call upon her life. And as she now responds in baptism, make her like Jesus. And may she know that all things work for the good of those who love you. And as she is baptised, we simply ask that you fill her with your Holy Spirit. Yes. May she encounter your Spirit in a powerful, life-changing way as she is now baptised. In Jesus' name. Amen. So before you're baptised, Ingria, let me just ask you those three questions. Ingria, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Ingria, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour? And Ingria, do you turn from evil? Do you, sorry, do you turn from sin, renounce evil, and intend to follow Christ? I do. This water is very, very pleasant and warm. <laughs> it is a little more shallow than I'm accustomed to, so I'm actually going to follow Simon's method of baptism tonight. I once put my back out. family are not here to support you tonight, but you are in the presence of the family that you married into, and more importantly, you're in the presence of your spiritual family. And on your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord, I now baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we've witnessed those baptisms, we know that we are surrounded. We know that Jake and Ingria are surrounded. And whatever battles we fight, we're on the winning side. So let's sing together. If you're in church or at home, stand and sing as we sing that we're surrounded by the presence of God.
seated. I just want to take a, a few moments to share a little bit of why as a church we feel it's so important to baptise, perhaps in these strange times, and perhaps the reason why even more so it's important to do that we're allowed to do it. I just want to use a simple text, I say a simple text, from 1 Peter chapter 3. It's a, such a simple text that the famous reformer Martin Luther said of this text, what a wonderful text this is, and a more obscure passage perhaps than any other in the New Testament. So why would I pick such a text on this baptismal service? Because this text, for me, explains why and how baptism saves us. And it's found in 1 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 21 and verse 22. And we read this. And this water symbolises baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the God's right hand with angels, authorities and powers in submission to him. And so this verse is important because it says baptism saves us. Baptism saves us. And that's why in these strange times, and maybe it seems insignificant what we're doing, but for us as Christians, this is talking about salvation and how God saves and rescues us. And therefore we cannot do anything more important at these strange times than to baptise. So what does it mean that baptism saves us? The first thing I just want to briefly look at is what does baptism save us from? Because that's the important question. That we need to be saved, but what do we need to be saved from? I was as a, a toddler, I was saved on one occasion. The family folklore of the Hudsons is I was about two years old and I was on a little tricycle and I loved my little tricycle. And I used to go around the back streets, we lived in a Bolton, so just imagine Coronation Street and the back alleys of Coronation Street. That's where I grew up and I was on my tricycle going over all these cobbles. And I knew where I was allowed and where I wasn't allowed. But one day I decided I wanted to explore further. And I set off on my journey, on the cobbled street. Little did I know that I was heading right into danger of a main road. And I got a bit annoyed as I went on this journey that somebody shouted at me. Someone came rushing out of their gate, shouting at me, telling me to turn around. I thought that was very rude. <laughs> How dare they? Here I am on my adventure of life, and I'm getting shouted at. Not only was I shouted at, they decided to pick me up, turn my tricycle around, and give me a shove in the other direction. How rude, I thought. But actually, it saved me. It saved me from danger. It saved me from a crisis. And really when we think of baptism saving, we believe it saves us from a crisis. It saves us from judgment. It saves us from chaos. It saves us from suffering. It saves us from death. Because this passage, and the bit before is the really complicated bit, which we won't go into tonight, but do talk to me if you're interested. He says, this water. What water? He's talking about the story of Noah and the ark. He's talking about the story when the water, how Noah and eight in the ark were saved, 
through the water in the ark. And that water through which they were saved and passed through symbolises baptism that saves us. Because he's reminding us that as in the days of Noah, so also we live in a world that ignores God, rejects God, doesn't follow God's ways, is rebelling against God, thinks it can run itself its own way, and it ends up in the mess it does. And it doesn't see the danger, the chaos, the suffering, the judgment that it's heading for. And therefore, we need to know that as we come to this baptism, we need to be saved from a suffering, a world under judgment, and ultimately the chaos of the world. Because water is that chaos in the Bible. Evil and chaos comes from the water. And it's only as we are saved from that, that we can know freedom and salvation and love and eternal life. And sometimes it takes the suffering to help us realise that. C.S. Lewis, uh, an Oxford scholar, once said that God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. It is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world. And as we look at our world, as we see pain and as we experience pain, we need to know we need saving. Because the ultimate thing we need saving from is death is death that comes to us all. So we need saving from, but let's also see how does baptism save us? How does it save us from God's judgment, from death itself? How does it save us? It's not the water itself that saves us. There's nothing special about this water. And in this passage we read this water symbolises baptism that saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body. He's almost downplaying the actual water. The actual water itself. That's not what saves you. So what does save you? He goes on to say. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities and powers in submission to him. The reason baptism saves you is because it saves us, because we are putting our faith in Jesus, who has conquered death, and who has overcome all authorities and powers. There's nothing that is not subject or under him, and he has conquered and defeated it all. Therefore, it is his resurrection that saves us. It's his victory over death, which can be ours. It's his victory over the principalities and powers and chaos in our world that can be ours. And that's why Paul in Romans talks about we are baptised into Christ. So in many ways what we are doing here is by faith we are showing that we are putting our faith in Jesus, his death and resurrection. So when I go into the water... to new life and it's my demonstration my faith in that that saves me it's like if you can imagine this bit of paper is you and this bible is christ when you come to believe in his resurrection you come to put yourself in christ and so therefore whatever happens now to this bible happens to the bit of paper 
And so when I become and put my faith in Christ, as baptism shows, I have died. I have been buried to my old life. But as I come out of the water, as Christ was raised to everlasting life, so too I have been raised to life. So it's not the water that saves me. It's my faith in saying that as I go through this water, as I am baptised, I am placing myself in Christ. I have died with him, I'm buried with him, but I've also risen to life. And I'm with Christ, seated in the heavenlies, above all the chaos, all the suffering, all the judgment. I am in Christ. I am saved. I am safe. And it's my baptism where I have showed that. So finally, if we're saved from the suffering and the pain and the judgment and death itself, if we're saved by being in Christ, what's the part I play? The part I play, we read here, is it's not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. The Greek word pledge really is a response to question. Where have we seen response to questions tonight? A pledge. A pledge of what I believe about Jesus. I believe, do you believe, I ask them, in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I'm asking them to confirm the divinity of Jesus, that they believe Jesus was fully God. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour? Do you believe he has rescued you and saved you and can rescue and save you from whatever this world will throw at you, even death itself? And do you turn from sin, renounce evil and intend to follow Christ? And it's on that pledge when you are baptised, declaring that you are in Christ, that you are saved. That you are rescued. That you are safe. That you are in the ark. You'll be saved through the water and the chaos of this world. And you will be safe and secure. I went sailing, as I said this morning, over the summer, and it was a great experience. But before then, I found sailing, I'd had to sail twice before, and once it was the most boring thing I had ever done. There was absolutely no way wind, and we just sat there, and I just sat there going nowhere. It was boring. The other time is the scariest thing I have ever, ever done. It was a gale force, or it seemed like that, and I thought I wasn't going to get out of it. Because water can sometimes be a pleasurable experience and can sometimes be a nightmare experience. Isn't that life? God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks in our conscience. At the moment, our world is facing a storm. You may be facing a storm in your life. I'm not going to belittle that at all. But what I do know is if I'm in the ark, if I've been baptised by saying that I am in Christ, then I know I am safe. Because the one I am in, the one I am trusting, is the one who defeated death, who is at the right hand of God, and
and who is reigning over all powers and principalities. And I am in him. So whatever this world throws at me, I am in him. I love that story of it's well with my soul. I didn't know that. What a tragedy. But yet, even in what the worst the world can throw at us, we can say, I am saved. I am safe. It is well with my soul because I am in that's how baptism saves us. And in the bit before, it talks about Noah and how Christ spoke through Noah. Because only you can only respond to this message if you've heard it. And the first thing about coming to faith is you need to hear this message. Hear this message that actually we are under judgment, we're under suffering, we're under chaos. Our world is not what it should be. But it should point us to God that we need to be saved from. But the good news is, just as the people in Noah's day were told that there is a flood coming, but come into the ark, the good news is there is an ark. We can be saved through it. But only, Peter tells us, only eight people, only eight people, saved on the ark. Only eight. And Peter uses this uh, as an encouragement to the people he wrote to because he was written unto Christians who were being persecuted, who were being marginalised, who were being killed for their faith. The world was throwing some terrible things at them. And they felt small. They felt insignificant. But Peter tells them, you're safe because you are in Christ. Tonight as you hear and as you've witnessed how to be saved, what's your response going to be? You're going to be like in the days of Noah, you're just going to carry on eating and drinking and being merry and hope we'll get through and... Maybe pray when the storms come, but when it's all calm, you just sit back and relax and hope for the best. Or will you let God speak to you in your pleasures and in your conscience, but shout in your pain? You need to save you by being in Christ, by believing and being baptised, and you will be saved. That's Jake's message to you tonight. That's Ingrid's message to you tonight. What are you going to do with that message? If you want to, we'll baptise you. Baptise you tonight. If you're at home, run down, I'll baptise you. Because this is important. Because it saves us. But if you can't make it tonight, let me know. Let's make that step. Because in a pandemic, when we're fearful, when we're worried about the future, of all the times, let's make sure that whatever happens, we're in Christ, we're safe, we're secure. Because we're in Christ, who has defeated death, and is above all principalities and powers. And my faith and hope we're going to close by singing, In Christ Alone, My Hope is Found. And perhaps tonight you want to emphasise the first two words, In Christ. And as we sing it, perhaps for the first time, you want to say, I want to put myself in Christ. I'm going to believe in his resurrection. And I'm going to put myself in him. And as you do that, that's how you come to faith. And then follow with baptism and then the spirit fresh upon Let's stand together and see. <laughs>
Please be seated. What a great evening of celebration of what God has done. Because salvation really has three parts, and we've seen those three parts. The first thing is what God has done in Christ. That's what saves us. The second is our response, our pledge before God of our faith in Him. And the third is what the church does. The church baptises in declaring that we are in Christ. And so today as a church we celebrate as we baptise Jake and Ingria. As part of this family, we have baptised them that they may know that they are loved of God, that God is pleased with them, but also hopefully to know that they are loved by us and we are pleased with them and we are going to care and look after so thank you for being baptised, thank you for allowing us to baptise you. And we hope that you feel part of our family as you continue to go forward with us. Thank you for coming to support them, thank you for watching on Zoom or Facebook. It's really good that you could do it. But do send your greetings to Jake and Ingria. If you're in the church, we know that you love to catch up and talk, but if you could do that in a safe way for me uh, as possible, that would be fantastic. So, good to see you. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Ingria. Thank, Thank you all for coming. Thank you if you've been watching online. May God bless you all. If you want to be baptised, if you want to talk about salvation and coming to play, do talk to me or one of the other church leaders.